What's up, guys? Jay Daniel here with my co-host Victor, and this is the Sales at Home podcast. Today, up, I want to introduce you to our special guest, Travis Clarich. Say hi. What's up, man? Good to have you, bro. Um, so we were, man. So like, and little background for everybody. Travis is is basically just uh, you know a sales ninja. Um, he came into the space like a year ago. He's been making some making some moves he's you know connecting with real estate and stuff and um, i think it'd be really good to kind of paint this picture of what it's like to be kind of a remote working like sales rep that's like isn't just starting but isn't really just in the come up but like now they're like you know getting to that that place of uh you know good things so i i guess uh the first first question is um why did you get into sales, Mr. <laughs> Travis? Why sales of all things? Why not, you know, why not work at the grocery store? Dude, I knew that was going to be the hard part of owning my own business. <laughs> like, if you don't got sales, you don't have a business. So I just figured, you know, I'd go that route. I was actually planning on starting off with starting my own uh, online personal training business. So mm-hmm. I, I got a course through Tanya Chittister, um, had everything set up. It's time to do sales. I, didn't, I realized I didn't know anything that I was doing around sales. And then they came out with this, like, they called it a beta program where his brother Gentry was like coaching sales reps and placing them in offers. And they needed just a handful of guys to kick it off. So I just joined there because I knew that's something that I needed to, you know, nail down. And then, yeah, I mean, that's how I ended up getting into it. So didn't intend on doing closing, you know, exclusively but just kind of turned into that it, it, we were having this conversation the other day right about like the potential of what you could make in sales you know uh, what, what's kind of been the shift for you from like i want to do it to like yo let me like like really do it well i mean so like I've, I've always been pretty good with people i've been a people person and so with the first offer i went into is a wholesale real estate mentorship um and it was the first online closing offer that i had i started it last like August of 2021. Um, and like basically by the end of September, I was the top guy there and I made over 11,000 bucks like in my pocket. <laughs> nice. And that was just in the first month of doing that. So I'm like, oh shoot, this is actually something that's that's got a lot of potential Bobby. here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then I, like as I've gotten into, you know, the whole industry and everything and networked more and gotten to know more people, there's dudes out there doing like, 50 100k months that kind of yeah. stuff so i'm like why not me so that's what i'm working on getting to right now oh my god and, and you know i'm um, like both of you guys right like tell like tell me if i'm wrong do you see all these opportunities like shopify amazon start a social media marketing agency like just like the other day right like so me, me and travis were in like a mastermind for like investing mm-hmm. um by the way incredible we'll get to that point in a second oh yeah um yeah no so yeah it's tra- funny story but um we uh actually i'm just gonna go into it dude it's the funniest shit I- i'm like yo travis I-, I got i got this thing that i'm putting money into man it's pretty cool you get some pretty good returns he's like well i'm not really that like where i got a lot going on i was and he was like wait i think i i can i, I think i know a guy and then the next week he's like hey dude i got 50k um how like so i think this is a good topic so for most salespeople, what they do is they just sell right feast famine they sell and then they they montage over they sell again and they do that for like 20 years how important do you think it is to start like investing and have a a a way out of sales oh dude you do not want to be doing (laughs) sales forever like no one actually wants to be doing sales for like 20, 30 years, because if you stop working, you don't get paid. Yeah. Right. Like you're, you're screwed. <laughs> um, and for me, I have a kid on the way. Like I'm having my, I'm having a son in February, the first one for us. And I mean, I'm not about to have uncertain months and then not have anything like kind of a cushion to fall back on. You know? um, and you know, people, don't generally care around our age, like early twenties. Um, but the thing is they're going to be caring when they're closer to 30 and they might have a kid on the way Yeah, and they're going to be wishing they started doing that kind of stuff sooner. Yeah, so, yeah for sure. I mean, 
I've got three kids. I know exactly what that's like. It's like, listen, bills got to get paid. You know, we got to make sure people are eating right. We got to make sure, you know, medical bills. We got to make sure there's clothes and shoes and like all the things the little princesses want. And it's like, all right, what do I do now? Because I don't now it's like, all right, now I don't got the time to be selling, you know, 10, 12 hours a day. Like I got to figure something out because as you as the responsibilities grow, then the time that you have to to do, you know, sales shrinks. Because you, the last thing you want to do is to have a family or have responsibilities and be that guy who never sees them. <laughs> like, what's the point? Yeah, you want to be a present parent. Like, exactly. You want to actually be there. Right. So it's like, what's the point in in all of this if you're not saving for something or building for something? What do you guys What do you guys think of the idea of buying your time back through investments? So like, <clears throat> people say. Uh, so, so in the chat right now, right? Meet me and, and Travis and, and another, like, you know, our boy, Jonathan, we're, shout out to Jonathan, we're in like a little text chat, right? And um, we were kind of going back and forth. And uh, I think Jonathan was like, so you want to, like, do you just want to retire? And I was like, I, just, I don't see it as, <laughs> I, I don't see it as retiring. Yeah. Me. I'm like, I'm buying my life back. Because if you're working and you don't want to work and there's, and it's for money, right? Like you're, in my opinion, you're almost like a slave to money because you have to trade your time for it in a way, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's different when you have you don't have to work, you don't have to do anything, quote, quote unquote, but you do it because you enjoy it. And I think you can draw like a certain level of productivity out of yourself, and and you can really start to enjoy life. Like, and I know that I know that there's this idea of like you can reframe it. No, I'm, I get to do this. I'm lucky I get to do this. <laughs> Fuck you, like dude. Like if you don't have to do it. And you're doing it that's when you get to do it yeah it's mental gymnastics that people are doing to just kind of try to talk themselves into settling for where they're at literally when it's just like okay things gotta change and it's it's cool because like kind of what you you guys are doing right is like you're painting that picture of like the consequence you know which is always healthy right like what happens if i'm 30 or 40 or 50 and then i have a kid and then i'm broke and then i can't even see them right because sadly that's the case for most people right that's hoping kinda... not having a kid when you're 50 bro <laughs> oh dude man you guys don't know my, my legacy bro i'm gonna <laughs> men as long as you're healthy you can have kids up until like your 80s you can have kids your whole life if you're healthy <laughs> so you know you you bring up you bring up being a slave to it and i think that often people think like oh yeah no no i, I get to do this like you said and it's that it's that trick positive of thinky bullshit yeah, but honestly <laughs> Like we're slaves to our needs because if we need it, there's something we have to work for, something we have to to put time and effort into. And mm-hmm. if we constantly need it, we're going to constantly be putting our time and effort into it. So the less you need it, the less you have to put effort in it. And that's where the real freedom comes in, right? Freedom comes in where I can do something just because I want to do it. I don't have to put the effort into it. That's why everybody's all after passive income. Everybody wants passive, passive, passive. And in reality, passive income isn't passive. Passive income is income that you've worked like a madman for in the beginning. So that way in the end, it pays you dividends. That's that's really what it is. But people just want to sit back and let the income come to them. And then they realize that that's not going to happen and they're going to be broke that way. So what do they do? They go find a job where they have to work and work and work and work and work and work. And then they're tired. And they're like, oh, yeah, I get to do this so I, I can pay my bills with it. But like, no, that's that's not the case. You're a slave to it because you need it. Mm-hmm. You're a slave to your needs. Exactly. Like, I don't want, I mean, I'm 34, right? Just turned 34. I do not want to be doing this at 44. You know, I don't want to, I want to be sitting somewhere managing investments at 44. You know, I want to be setting my kids up for their lives. And it's like, but I I don't want to be sitting here on, on sales calls all day talking to people who are too stubborn to realize that they need some help. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. but you have to have that plan. You've got to have that that goal. So for for Travis, like you talk about, you know, your kid and and what you're working towards. Like, what are those goals that you're trying to hit now? Ah, uh, dude, I want to be a stay-at-home dad. <laughs> it's, it's the life bro <laughs> yeah like i i want to be able to be a stay-at-home dad my wife she wow. so basically she started off wanting to be a lawyer and mm-hmm. then i started bringing in income with this job and she realized she doesn't have to pick the thing that would make the most money that she would enjoy the most 
she could pick the thing that she would just enjoy the most. Mm-hmm. Um, so she's trying to figure out what she wants to do right now, but she's not going to be a lawyer anymore. Um, That's but, a huge yeah. flex, man. It's a huge flex when you can say, listen, I'll stay at home and I'll do this, sure, but you go and do whatever you want to do. And that's what we're working towards right now. It's just like, yeah. all right, my wife went part-time. She is a med tech. She loves working in the lab. She calls herself a, a scientist. Whatever, do you, babe? <laughs> <laughs> and and for the most part, I'm home with the kids. I'm home with the kids. She was able to go part time at work. Doesn't have to stress out so much. And it's like, that's the that's the dream. Everybody's like, oh, I want a Lambo, or oh, I want all this stuff. Like, who cares? What I want is no stress in my house. I don't want my yeah. wife to have to to freak out about where money's coming from, or I don't need her to yeah. stress about having to go to work every day and miss out. Lambos are nice but, though. Continue. Say what? Lambos Jay wants a Lambo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Lambos are nice when you're 24 and by yourself. <laughs> Dude, it's, it's different, man. It's different whenever you get married. You start with kids. Nah, you I are, know you already married before. Nah, um, you guys are old. Yeah. You guys are old with kids. And Dude, I'm 23. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, I'm this reminds me of something, though. I joined this one group called Cash Flow Tactics. They pair real estate with whole life insurance policies to create cash flow. There's better ways for cash flow, I'm yeah. learning. But, um, they talk about how there's these four quadrants in life. There's spiritual, social, and then mental slash emotional, and then financial, mm-hmm. right? And how when one of them starts to take all of your energy, like financial, all of the other ones have energy drawn away from it to focus on that one quadrant. Yeah. So if you have like passive income coming in and you have your needs taken care of financially, then all of a sudden all three other quadrants start to just thrive and take off. Right. So my wife and I talk about it all the time. We want to get to the point where we're doing about like two to 300,000 passively, which honestly, like people think that sounds insane, but it's really not that insane if yeah. you just go about it smartly. But we want to get to that point so we can do whatever we want. Right. Like um, we talked about it the other day. We could literally just choose whatever we want in that moment, do it for a couple of years, and then move on to the next thing, whatever interests us. Like for me, there's like a few different things like i want to start a program that works with kids from 15 to and then into adults to 30 showing them you know how to figure out what inspires them how to you know develop that high performance mindset and has those mental skills to be able to actually go you know produce and achieve what they put their minds to so that we can they can start off their life with more direction Mm -hmm. instead of just kind of being aimless a little bit like a fortune a lot of people go through but then I also want to just have this warehouse where I can just host community events and do like yeah. these giant paintball wars or like, you know, random crap like that, that people can go to for free. Right. So um, I would love Dude. to be able to do that kind of stuff. And Travis, I can only do that with one. Travis, bro. Like, and here's the thing, right? Cause a lot of people heard all that. They heard the 200, 300 K a month, like recurring. <laughs> right. And, and they're like, is that even possible? Or that's not even possible. Right. It seems like a lot to people who aren't doing it. But when you know people who are doing it, right, like it's not a lot, right? To people who are doing it, it's not a lot. And I think a lot of the times, like it's it's understanding, not just conceptually, but actually like like under like knowing like, okay, cool. Like he's this guy's doing it. He fucking wakes up, puts his pants on, brushes his teeth, probably fucks up a little bit, you know, like for, for, forgets to wash his face. Like these guys are human, bro. And, and like, like, I, I, like. Okay, so in the mastermind, the guy that's running it, right? Super cool, dude. I love that dude. But look at him. Doesn't look particularly like Travis. Let's be honest. Does he look like a capitalist hippie, bro? (laughs) (laughs) He's wearing a fucking suit, (laughs) up. Like he's got like the long shoulder length hair that's like slicked back, got his hat on. (laughs) Look. Yeah. yeah. So like, so much of it, really, so much of it, it is just like finding what works and then just building it. And I and I think the biggest issue people run into is, is that consistency in doing that you know because even with the gym like tra- victor travis is a bodybuilder this guy's like yeah we used to be in the same offer and he was like yeah sorry guys sorry i was late i was bench pressing 405 pounds for 15 reps <laughs> and um <laughs> and um like you know it's the same concept with fitness right if you're consistent you keep growing and building following the same strategy that worked for other guys that's why you have like the ronnie coleman's and the mm-hmm. freaking arnold schwarzeneggers right you, you, you get there um it doesn't happen overnight but you can actually just do the numbers and you can see how long it's going to take you like realistically you know 
like two, 300 K, especially in the industry that we're in. Like, I think we could all do that. Like in the next 10 years, you know, potentially less, you know, it's funny it, why, and you mentioned fitness, but why people don't succeed is because they cannot put the longevity in to make it work. Right. So like, like that pushup challenge I did, Travis, I started, I turned 34 September 23rd, right? So around February 11th, I was like, you know what? I'm going to do 34,000 pushups before I turn 34, right? It, it came out to like 125 a day, right? depending on the date that I started. It was around February sometime. So I get into 125, 125, 125, 125 for a good month or two. I'm straight, right? I'm solid. I'm on track. Then we have a kid in the middle of April. <laughs> throws everything out of whack inconsistency not stop but what happens when you're inconsistent with something like that when you have a set deadline and it's like every day you have to double up and then you got to do more and then you got to do more and then so some days i'm doing 400 and then other days i'm like i'm doing 250 and i'm just trying to make up i made it a day before i turned 34 i, I crushed my 34,000, right but it's like I look back in my spreadsheet that I kept and it's like zeros here, there's zeros there, but then I doubled up here and I had double up there and, and double up over, over here. But looking at that, it's a, it's a tell of what longevity and consistency actually looks like. It doesn't mean that you're going to be consistent every single day. It doesn't mean that every day you're going to crush it. It doesn't mean that you're going to conquer your goal every single time you set out to do it, but it's like, all right, I know I didn't do it yesterday. Let me make up for it. Let me add a couple more. Let me let me do a couple more reps today. Let me have a couple more calls. Let me talk to a couple more business owners. Let me let me, you know, network with a couple more people because it's like I know I'm slacking a little bit or I slacked off a little bit. Let me pick the pace back up. And some people think that success is like, all right, if I don't start out right and stay right forever, I'm never going to get there. But that's not the case. Like you're going to mess up. You're going to fall, you're going to slip up. Success doesn't come because you're consistent every single day. It comes because when you're, even when you're not, you get back up and get back into it. And a lot of people aren't achieving that because they're not getting that mentality of like, okay, I messed up, but I can still get to my goal. Well, I think they let themselves get like stupid discouraged too, right? Like people think of a like success and they think of it like a straight, like 45 degree diagonal line on a graph, but it's more like a bell curve. Yeah. Right. It's like, if you have this goal that you want to hit in 10 years, um, like 500,000 bucks in 10 years, like year nine, you're probably more at like 200,000. And then the year 10, it's like, it just starts to skyrocket because of what you've been putting into it. Right. It's just, it has that, that curve to it. So I think people get discouraged whenever they start to mess up because they see themselves as restarting down that diagonal line. But in reality, yeah. like, they didn't really get that far up in the beginning in the first place. There's a lot more that goes into it. Yeah. I think a big issue, I think I think a big thing a lot of people run into is like, like, cause I think it's good to have people that you're like inspired by and you watch, but what do you, don't you think like this kind of era, mm -hmm. right? This, uh, like this time in history, like a lot of people were like spectators where they spend a lot, they, they actually spend more time watching other people succeed than doing it themselves. Or, or like or, or or like even like learning about success instead of doing it right like i i think i see that i'm seeing that a lot um especially within the last couple of years uh and, and people that i talk to a lot right because most people are smart most people know the shit they have to do it's just like okay last 24 hours like what's that look like and usually it's not consistent what, what do you guys think about that i think we've got a lot of consumers it's a it's a it's a capitalist consumer era that we live in and everybody wants to soak up and absorb knowledge, but we don't have a lot of doers. Right. And, and then when we have the doers, we criticize them heavy. You know, we look at Elon Musk and we're like, you're such an idiot for trying to get to Mars, but he's sending things to space and actively trying to get to Mars, you know, but we're going to sit here and just watch him because we want to consume all the content, but not put out anything ourselves. Just well, to, yeah. to add to that, hold on. So basically what you're saying is it's not working. It's not working. It's not working? No. Are you, are you kidding me? You, you can't hear this fucker? I'll just do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bruh. 
You, you say it we're old. Um, yeah, I got to get a new mic. Go on, Travis. No, I was going to say, I mean, I was 100% a consumer starting out, man. Like, I've invested around like 50,000 bucks into different courses, mentorships, like coaches, that kind of stuff. I've probably actually done this stuff in about like $20,000 instead of the other 30 yeah. left over. Like, it, it just, it is what it is. You have to pull yourself out of it. Yeah. Yeah. We you all know, start you there. Know, you know, Elon Musk, um, have you guys ever listened to one of his podcasts? <laughs> no. He's really dry for me, bro. <laughs> I, I I like his tone. Remember, he's, I'm 34. He's a rocket. He's a spaceship. I, I start to here. <laughs> Jesus. Okay, so Elon I did Musk. see his Rogan. I did see him on Rogan. I listen to like Simon Sinek. I know it's not even the same level at all, but I'm like that dude. <laughs> no, that's just racist. You just said that because we're both white. No, so... So Elon Musk, no, bro. Like, so I'm just kidding. So like, um, so Elon Musk, he was saying like, yeah, yeah. So somebody asked him, so SpaceX, rocket ships, like the world's, you're building the world's biggest, like, like five ton rocket ship. Why? How? Did you go to college? They're like, no. How did you learn that? He was like, oh, I just read books. And he's like, you, you read books. And, and and then Musk was like, yeah, you could learn anything just reading books. You just have to apply yourself. How many books do you read? A book every every day or two, two two books a day. And he grew, you know, and it's like, it's that idea of like, he'll read it and he'll apply it, right? He didn't spend anything. There's people that will spend all this money, but they they won't apply it, right? And I think um that that's kind of like the 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 dark side of this industry, right? Of like the high ticket kind of information space that people don't talk about. Um, a lot of people could get, most people could get the result if they just had their head on straight. And if their head isn't on straight, it doesn't matter if they pay some, a company 50 grand to fucking do everything for it and they're going to find a way to fuck it up. You know? Dude, that's why mindset is so freaking huge in this industry and this position. Like, if your mindset is even just slightly off, that you're not going to have as good of a day. Like, close 100%. As you look at it on top of its game. That's yeah. all the objection handle. <laughs> yeah, I love I love like when mindset comes into play too because people think mindset is like positive thinking. But mindset has nothing to do with how you think. It has everything to do with how you act because of how you think. And it's like if when when people start applying that, then it's great. And like like you said, the, it it sucks because there's a lot of a lot of negatives in this in this industry, but at the same time it's great because the people that come out good like like Travis, like yourself, the people that come out and do well far outdo everybody else around them because everybody else around them is too busy with their mouth open watching and they're not doing it. And that's why you can say I made 11,000 in my first month at, at this new company because there are a lot of people wondering, how do I do this? How do I get on these calls? And you probably just picked up the phone, started messaging people, started like having conversations and realizing that people want to get into real estate. They want to get into wholesaling. They want this. So if they want it and they're coming to me because they want it, I'm going to give them what they want. And all you're doing is connecting and people put it to like, people make it so complicated. People make it yeah. so, so complicated. And yeah. I was, I was talking to my original coach Gentry um, the other day, uh, just kind of filling in on what happened with our last offer that we were in um and like in his advice on it before i ended up leaving but basically like he he told me that i was one of the best ones he ever brought in he's got a ton of people coming in and like they're just being scared and like, that kind of stuff and they have that negative like self-talk which like you keep telling yourself you're not going to do well then of course you're not doing well right yeah um but now that made me think like the the first thing i did when i started working with him he told me to get the book alter ego by todd herman um, I don't know if either of you have been through that or not, but it is like the biggest game changer for me because it's like I'm not actually being me when I'm on a sales call. I'm being someone else. I'm being someone that's actually being good at sales and love sales when I'm on a sales call. Mm -hmm. Like me, Travis Clarence, I hate it. <laughs> like, I, I don't like doing sales calls myself, but whenever I step into my um my field of play, that's the way he puts it, like how a football player steps onto the field and then he just shifts becomes like the meanest dude ever uh my field of play i walk into my office like when i'm about to start doing sales calls i'm getting into my role essentially and that book like walks you through how to do that like there's been 
super, super famous, extremely successful people and swear by this method, right? Um, so that was definitely one of the things that helped me just kind of pull myself out of Freaking fire. So to anybody watching, uh, if you're having trouble with your mindset, if you want to level up, check that book out. Uh, link will be in the description. Of course, it'll be my affiliate link. So I receive a 0.001% commission from amazon.com. Um, I'm just kidding. I may or may not put that there. But guys, this has been fun. <laughs> um, we are going to call it here. Uh, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Be sure to check out Travis on his socials. He is a... Mm. You're not going to find me. I, I'm, find on, I'm on nothing. I'm, I am oh. just started trying to update my LinkedIn. It's not good. Like, oh. You're not going to see anything about me. Well, if, if Travis decides to sell something, we'll put it in the comments in the, in the description <laughs> below. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. This has been fun. Um, that is today's episode. See you.